This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to take a look at the progress that we've made in our simple game and start to save it so that when we leave a session and come back to it, the progress we've made is retained. Now, we're going to do this using player press right now, and if you've seen my videos on saving things, you know that that's not the ideal place to be saving things like game progress, but it's going to be the quickest way to kind of iterate and get something that's working into our game. So that's where we're going to start today, but we will be building on this as we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new C Sharp script in our scripts, and we're going to call this Save Manager. I'm going to keep it outside of the four categories here because this is sort of an, um, one of these umbrella. It's going to actually going to be a static class that kind of exists outside of the game itself. Um, and so it's not going to live in any of these right now. I will open that up in MonoDevelop. And I've also opened up the Play Session Manager, which we're going to be making some tweaks to because this is where we're actually going to be saving our game. So our Save Manager, I'm going to get rid of the Mono Behavior Inheritance. And we're going to make this a public static class. And in here we're going to put three methods. The first one will be a public static void called save. Whenever you're making a static class you need to make sure that all of the methods and variables inside of it are also static. The second one is going to be public static void load. And finally, we're going to have a public static void called clear saves. And this is really for our debugging purposes, where we know that we're going to at some point need to you know, revert back to the original state of our game. And this is going to be a way for us to do that really quickly. So for saving, what we have is in our play session manager, we've got this integer for this level. And we actually have a public way to get that here, which is this getter property for this level that will get us that information. So. What we basically want to do is when we update this for this level, we want to save that to player prefs. And we can do that pretty easily right here. We can say player prefs dot set integer, since the level is an integer. And we need to give this a key, a name, something that we know we're always going to get it as. And I think we're going to use the same um, naming that we use in Play Session Manager. So we'll say furthest level. And then we need to give it the value. And the value we're going to give it is the play session manager, the instance of that, our stat our singleton instance right now. And then we're going to get that for this level integer. And it's really that simple to save our level right now. We do actually obviously have to call this, but that's how easy it is to put it into player prefs for us. Loading the integer is going to work pretty similarly. Uh, but in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take this particular property and we're going to set it to the value in for this level. What's nice is that if there isn't a for this level value, for example, you've, you're playing the game for the very first time, you don't have any player prefs yet, it will simply return zero, which makes sense for what we would do. We would want player to start at our zero index level. So we don't have to do any kind of uh, checking on that right now. But in here, what we'll do is we'll say play session manager dot ins dot furthest level equals player prefs dot get int and we'll again get that same furthest level key furthest level key now there's a slight problem with this which is that furthest level right now can only get an integer we can't actually put an integer in there so we do need to update that in the play session manager we can jump back here it's pretty easy to do what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this now on a separate line. And then after it, I'm going to put a setter, which is going to simply be furthest level equals value. Now, the nice thing about properties like this is we can actually add additional functionality and logic to them. For example, we may want to check here that this isn't trying to set it to something that's bigger than the catalog we have. But for right now, we'll just leave it as is. Finally, we have clear saves, and this one again we're going to call um, when we choose to. In this case, I think what we're going to do is we're going to say when we press a certain key, we'll clear our saves. And so what we'll put in here is player prefs dot delete all. And what that will do is take any any numbers, any settings we have in our player prefs, and it will delete them all. Right now we only have the one, 
and there is a delete key which will let you delete specific ones if there's ever a situation where you say want to delete your player progress but not your you know music settings things like that but right now delete all will work for us with that now we need to actually call these so that they happen in our game we're going to do these all right inside of the play session manager which is nice and convenient the first one we want is to be able to load our player's progress once we start the game now best place I think for us to do this is to check right here. When we, once we've determined that this is the instance we're going to use as our singleton, we can simply say, okay, we're starting the game. We've set our singleton. This is the uh, play session manager that's going to be living throughout the game. Let's load any progress we have. So right here we can say save manager dot load, and that's all we need to do. Remember, this is a static class, so we don't have to give it any specific instance of save manager. We can just simply call the static class and get the load method on it. The next thing we're going to do is save our game and when we want to do that is whenever this furthest level actually gets updated. And where that happens is down in our level end, you'll remember that right here we say if our current level is beyond our furthest level, that's when we are setting that furthest level. And so right here I'm going to, after we set the furthest level, we are going to say save manager dot save and that will in addition to updating the furthest level here, it will then save that value to player prefs for us. Finally, we want to, again, I say it like, we want to press a key and be able to clear our saves when we want to, at least right now as, um, as the developer of the game. It's probably not something, we may want that eventually if someone wants to like hit a button in the game and clear it, they can do that as well. But for right now, in our play session manager, we're simply going to create an opportunity to press a key, one that we're not likely to hit by accident, and get rid of our saves. So I'm going to do that down here. I'm going to create a void update method so that we can check for a key press. And we're going to say if input dot get key down. So it'll only happen when we press the key down. And I'm going to use the key code. I'm going to use the equal key. Um, it's pretty out of the way. It's over by the uh, backspace. It's not something that we're going to hit accidentally while we're playing the game. And when that happens, we're going to call our save manager and we'll simply call clear saves. Now what would be nice here too is when we clear our saves, right now nothing's really going to happen. Um, and so it would be nice to have some sort of a um, feedback to say that, hey, just so you know, you just cleared your saves so that we're not ever wondering, oh no, why did my saves go away? So I think what would be a good idea is in our save manager back here, after we've run this delete all, we can say debug.log saves cleared and so that'll give us um, a mention in the console and then we can kind of track back and see if ever our saves disappear without us understanding why we can track it back and see where that happened and so that's really all you need is these few lines of code choosing you know kind of strategically where to put them inside of the play session manager and now what we'll see is if we jump back to unity we hit play Go to choose level, we've only got level zero right now because we've just started our game. If I choose that though and then I play it out, go over to the goal, hit the goal, I can return to the menu, choose level, now you see I can get to level one as well. If I completely quit out of the game, stop our play session, normally this would reset our game, but what I can do now is play, go back to choose level, and sure enough we still have, we're retaining that information now. It's stored in player prefs and the game knows, hey, You've reached level one, you have that option now. However, if I go back now to here and I hit the equal sign, you'll see down here, debug log, saves cleared. I can see why that happened. Play session manager update, got the um, input button, and then it cleared the saves for me. But now if I go back to choose level, we're back to just level zero because we've reset that. It is worth noting if you're on the level selection page and you hit equals, it's not going to reload uh, this, so you won't see a change up here right now. It's something we could certainly add in the future, and we can look into that. Uh, but for right now, we've got a rudimentary saving system going. We're going to be able to build on this, use it both for saving settings in our game, as well as doing some um, a little bit more robust stuff in saving our actual progress. So in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.